Hey guys, I was gonna show you what I've been working on with my AK. Uh, I have it partially disassembled first so I can show you how an AK works in case you don't know. Um, so this section here is called the bolt carrier and uh, it is attached to this piston up here and down here is the barrel and when you fire a bullet the gas expands in the barrel pushing the bullet down the barrel and once the bullet once the bullet gets past this point here the gas goes through a hole in the barrel and comes back up and and pushes into this chamber here the gas chamber and pushes backwards on this piston up here and the force on this piston pushing back is what moves the bolt and bolt carrier back it comes all the way back here Pushing it back unlocks the bolt. The bolt has little uh, lugs in it that lock it to the barrel for firing. And so the piston, piston pushing backwards unlocks the bolt and allows it to come all the way back here. As it comes back, it pulls out the empty case and ejects it. And then it gets behind the new case and the magazine down here, pushes it off the magazine and into the chamber. Now the problem uh, that a lot of people talk about with AKs straight from the factory is the amount of gas that's coming through the port here is a little too much. It puts too much force on the piston, forces this back way faster and harder than it needs to, causes a lot of extra recoil when you're shooting so it's harder to control, and it can even wear on the gun a little bit. Um, mine had so much gas that as the bolt came all the way to the back, it was sort of impacting back here and denting the back of the bolt carrier a little bit and the front of this this rear trunnion here. Um, so I decided to modify it to reduce the amount of gas pressure that's pushing backwards on it. And the way I did that was by modifying the piston up here. So as you can see there's a hole in the front of the piston there and there's another one on the side there and these holes actually connect through the piston and allow some of the gas that's hitting the front of the piston to go through it and come out the hole on the side rather than putting pressure on the front of the piston forcing it backwards. So here I've set up the piston in a lathe with a 764 inch drill bit. Uh, I originally started this with um, just regular steel drill bits, but it turned out that the piston was harder than I expected. I didn't think it was hard in steel, but I had a lot of trouble drilling through it and I broke a few drill bits. So then I switched over to a cobalt drill bit that was quite a bit stronger and you can see that it's having, it's, it's going through the piston pretty easy here, digging in really quickly. Uh, so first I drilled through the end there and then I switched over to a 45 degree angle from the side and just had it deep enough from the front so that these two intersect in the middle and then I have a path through the piston. Here you can see is uh, before and after on the left is before on the right is after. If you pay attention to how long the bolt is open on the right one the after drilling the piston the bolt stays open slightly longer that just indicates there's less overall energy being put in the spring behind it. It's moving backwards slower and forward slower. Reduces the recoil very slightly. It's even hard to tell from this video if the recoil is actually lower, but the felt recoil to me is slightly lower. And the biggest difference I notice is that as it's ejecting the shells, they don't travel nearly as far. It used to throw the, the cases like 30 feet away and it would be hard to find them, but now they all land like 15 to 20 feet away and it's much more convenient to clean up the shell casings after shooting. Well, I hope you guys found that interesting. I will talk to you later.